Hi lovies, welcome back to my channel and um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, so today we are going to talk, to talk about brooms, which is brooms, um, the besoms as they were called and um, how they came to be associated with witches, their traditions, superstitions and the law. That's my cat moving the, the camera. Okay, so here's one of my brooms. I purchased this um, at the um, Big W. There were, um, I'm going to, my cat, sorry. <laughs> She's behind the camera, that's why. Um, so yeah, they were doing sales on the Halloween stuff, Halloween um, merchandise. So I just purchased these, I bought a few, and I just um, decorated it and um, consecrated it and made it my own witch's broom and I do have these on my Etsy as well they're infused with cinnamon I'll explain the magical properties of herbs um, spices the woods um, used to make the brooms um, and when you infuse it with um, essential oils and other plants and twigs as well so let's get started with how they came to be. So bear with me. All right. So the earliest brooms, as I um said before, they were known as besoms or besoms. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's one of these B E S O M S, <laughs> and they were often made with birch twigs um and tied to a hazel or a chestnut wood um a stick. There are other sticks as well, um, like apple, ash, and some other stuff. I've, I've written them down, but I'll get to them later. Um, brooms were associated, associated with a marriage um, throughout history. Um, for centuries, couples jump over besoms or brooms um, during hand fasting and weddings um, in various cultures. These happened when clergymen were not available or not enough clergymen were around to do these marriage ceremonies um, so they would offer uh, to make the marriage official by jumping over those brooms in front of many witnesses um, african-american slaves who were not allowed to um, get married from uh, um, from their masters um, these practices were mainly from their homeland so they, they followed these their homeland practices and traditions and brought them down to the American side um, and so that's how they would get married to one another okay so let's get let's talk about how let's tell let's talk about how the witches and brooms were associated together okay so a magic lore no one really knows um, how they came to be, but um, from superstitions and theories, um, uh, mostly from the Christian side, they um, associated witches and brooms when they saw women riding their broomsticks. Applying this theory about women uh, or witches flying their brooms, um, in early pagan practices, local women would gather around the newly planted fields with their besoms between their legs, like a child, you know, um, riding a, a stick like a horse. They will circle the field and hop as high as they could. The higher they leapt, the higher the crops would grow. Some people believe that this was the origin of flying witch on, a, on her broom. Um, Another theory that brooms were used as a way to hide the witch's most important tool, the wand. By wrapping birch twigs around the end, which was sometimes carved in a phallic design, that would be a dead giveaway to its magical purposes. The wand could be disguised as a common household implement. Since witches originally were seen as flying on sticks, it makes sense that a witch wouldn't want to leave a long carved wand sitting out out where anyone could see it 
Um, so almost most witches were accused um, were women, and they were accused these women as being witches um, because brooms were, were a symbol of a woman's role and power in the home. To show, to show visitors that she wasn't at home, a woman would lean her broom outside the door or push the handle of a broom up the chimney. This may have led to the next step, believing that witches could use a broom to fly up the chimney. And up and away. <laughs> magical law associated with the witch and her broom by the Catholic Church. In 1458, a church inquisitor said that believing witches could fly was part of their official beliefs. At that time, witches were seen as flying about on sticks, but by 1580, that had changed to brooms. So um, during the Renaissance, um, demonologists said that the devil presented witches with brooms along with flying ointment to make them move through the air and often gave them an animal familiar or smaller demon to ride around on it with them being most of them seeing them as with cats um, male witches who were referred to as sorcerers at those times also rode brooms but were more likely to be depicted astride a pitchfork it was thought that witches flew on their brooms to sabbaths where they could meet up with other witches for the purpose of causing mischief. They were believed to call up storms or cast spells on their neighbours or on the villagers. While there was no reason to believe any of that type of law, there is some evidence that flying ointment was a real thing. Um, although no doubt it was ripped up by the witches themselves, not given to them by the devil. Catholic stuff. <laughs> um, flying ointment was a mix of grease or lard with various hallucinogenic plants such as belladonna, hellebore and hemlock. This preparation was too toxic to be taken internally so it was rubbed on the body um, and supposedly on the broomstick as a, used as a phallic tool to apply the flank ointment to the more delicate areas of the body where it could be absorbed more quickly. Um, the herbal ointment then gave the user the sense of flying or perhaps it aided in trans journeying um, or astral travel. And do not try this at home as well. But there is a more positive um, spin to the law of witches flying brooms. So many goddesses are depicted as flying through the air, sometimes on brooms or other items, on staffs, spinning tool or on the backs of animals or birds. So there's positive and negative. Um, so it may be that witches have come to be associated with broomstick flights as a reflection of their connection with the powerful abilities of the goddess that most of us worship. Um, the moon goddess and other types of goddesses. Um, such as Baba Yaga, um, you got Holda, she's a North European goddess. Uh, she is said to travel with a pack of hounds. Baba Yaga, um, a well known witch who was perceived as a goddess with power over the elements. She had a magical broom that she used to sweep the path behind her as she flew through the air in her enchanted mortar and pestle. Holda, the Northern European goddess, was said to travel with a pack of hounds. She flew at the head of a gathering of unchristened children and other dead souls in the wild hunt, all mounted on brooms. This disquieting group flew through the night, especially between Christmas and Epiphany. As a winter goddess, Holda was also known as Hulda, Snow Queen, and Mother Holle, Hol, or Holle. She was known for bringing good fortune and prosperity to those with kind hearts and misfortune to those who were lazy or cruel. Um, Sao Cheng Niang, I hope I pronounced that right, <laughs> was a Chinese goddess known as the Lady of the Broom. She lived on the Broom Star, uh, Sao Chu, and was in charge of good weather. Um, 
There is another Aztec goddess in who was worshipped in pre-Columbian Mexico. Her name T Tiazoltiotl. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll put the names. Um, she was usually known either carrying or flying on a broom. She was invoked to sweep away her followers, wrongdoings, and during rituals, her priests burned incense and put brooms across the sacred fires. She was a dark maiden who inspired sin, but also swept it away. Rather ironically, this broom goddess was also a goddess of filth. She was also the matron of midwives and female healers, as well as weavers. Sorry, as well as weavers. While most of while most often depict, depicted as a statue of a naked woman squatting in the throes of labor, she is also pictured as riding on a broom, still naked except for a hat, accompanied by ravens, wolves, and bats. So ravens, owls, and bats. All right, so let's get to the general broom lore. Um, these brooms are, um, they talk about the normal household brooms. So um, first one, if these, hang on, these are the um, superstitions, old wives' tales and traditions. Um, some of them contradict each other. Um, all this information is from the Witch's Broom, the Craft Law and Magic Broomsticks by um, Deborah Blake. She's just amazing. And I lo I'm loving this book. Um, so let's get to the first one. If you drop a broom, you'll get company soon. It is bad luck to move an old broom into a new house. Always buy a new one and leave the old one behind. This only applies to regular cleaning brooms, not used for magic. Placing a small broom under your pillow will keep away nightmares. Uh, also, you can keep away nightmares by hanging a broom on the door, on the bedroom door, and placing garlic under your pillow. And I'm pretty sure no one would place garlic under their pillow. <laughs> to bring rain, stand outside and swing a broom in the air over your head, um, spinning it clockwise and chanting a spell. Lightning is attracted to brims, so you can use them as lighting rods to protect your home. It is unlikely to buy a broom in August. Brims brought in May sweep family away. Brims should be placed bristle up to make them last longer, but also for good luck. Sweep toward the fireplace if you have one. If a family moves, it is bad luck to leave the broom behind, even if it is old. Um, see how it contradicts to the other one about leaving the broom behind because um, it's bad luck to bring it with you to your new home. So it's either one. Um, it's what your, um, it's what the, there's many cultures out there that contradict each other as well. Now, if you want to make your own broom or do not have access to um, make your own broom, if you live in the city or in the, in the urban areas and you can't get to the forest, um, you can buy your own brooms and just consecrate it and make it your own and put symbols. Um, I haven't carved any symbols, but I have attached symbols to it, such as the um, pentagram and the triquetra, um, connecting with the goddess and protection with all the elements there. I have attached a black tourmaline for protection and a clear quartz to attract um positive vibes for cleansing and um clarity as well and purification i also have added but it's dried up it is um lavender lavender brings in good luck love and um protection but i don't really um, associate it with protection it's what i really connect with so mostly luck um other thing i have uh, no, I did not put the cinnamon on it, cinnamon on it, but I, I infused it, I put drops of protection oil. And what I do is I hang it beside the door or where the window is. There's a door and the window just right next to each other. So I hang it that way. Um, it repels the negativity and for protection for my home and um, unwanted spirits. 
because I work with spirits and all that kind of stuff. So I don't want any negative spirits coming into my home. So as like a protection boundary and protection from those people, these unwanted guests. <laughs> um, other thing, if you want to um yes as i said if you want to buy it you can carve it um carve symbols carve incantations on it um and use oils and then make your own magical broom now if you have access to the forest if you have access to any type of wood available to you and make want to make your own these are some types of um, wood you can use um First, we've got Elder, A-L-D-E-R, not Elder, E-L-D-E-R. This is another one. Um, it's uh, This tree is associated with witchcraft. It's been there for a long time with witchcraft. Um, elder can grow in boggy ground where other trees can't survive. So it is a water element plant. So if you're creating a brim for a purpose that has water connections, you may want to consider Elder. Um, once cut, um, the other will turn red and therefore is sometimes linked to a woman's bleeding cycles and is particularly protective for women. In Ireland, it was once forbidden to cut down an elder, whereas in Italy, the wood was used for May Eve Beltane uh, bonfires. In the Ogham alphabet, the elder stands for endurance, strength and passion. Another one is apple, apple tree. Um, uh, this tree is associated with magic and witches. If you cut an apple in half across the middle, you can see a pentacle inside. And they used to hang these cut up apples around the home or in, around ceremonies uh, for protection. Apple wood has, been, has long been used for wands, but there is no reason you can't use it for a broom. Um, you can find a long enough piece apples to make a, a broom just cut it up and sand it carve it whatever you want apples are often associated with love magic so if you want a broom uh, for that use uh, or to sweep love into your home as in the as in rituals and spells apple wood might make a good choice apples are associated with love healing and immortality the Ogham symbol, symbol, sorry, the Ogham symbol for apple stands for beauty, love, and generosity. Another one, a type of wood, is ash. Ash is the traditional choice for a witch's broom, uh, because it is associated with protection and strength, as well as healing and prosperity. In Northern Europe, the ash was referred to as Yggdrasil the world tree. Ash is also sacred to Druids. In the Druids Ogham tree alphabet, Ash stands for connection, wisdom and surrender. Birch uh, is another one. So birches are among the most mysterious and beautiful of trees. Slender, white and resilient, they bend instead of breaking. Also known as the Lady of the Woods, Birches have a definite feminine feel to them and are associated with birth and new beginnings. Traditional besoms use birch twigs for the sweeping end, but there is no reason why you couldn't use birch uh, for the handle of a broom as well. The birch symbolizes purity, healing, banishing, purification and light. So it is perfect for any broom that is specifically designed to sweep away negativity. The birch is associated with Bridget or Brigid and Baba Yaga. In the Ogham alphabet, it stands for beginning, renewal and youth. The Elder, E-L-D-E-R, um, also known as the Witch Tree, um, has long been linked to magic and witchcraft. Um, according to Judica Eels, the Encyclopedia of Witchcraft, um, she says the elder is a threshold tree. It serves as a portal that allows souls to pass between realms. Ghosts, spirits and elves can pass into the mortal realm via uh, through the elder trees. 
and bushes. But remember one way, signs don't exist in the magical shamanic world. Elders are also portals where you can access other realms. If you want a broom for divination or one especially for use on Sarwan, you might consider making the handle out of elder. Elders are associated with protection, love, banishing and purification. It is particularly useful for protection or hand fasting brooms. In the Ogham, in the Ogham alphabet, elder stands for transition, evolution and continuation. And then you've got the elm tree. Elm trees were also linked to witches with the Scotch elm being known as the wish elm or witch, uh, W-Y-C-H. <laughs> and the German Hexen Normi, translated to witch's elm. The Romani gypsies used elm branches for their magic wands, although they believed that the wood should never be cut from a living tree and wait to find a fallen branch to use instead. So if you want to use um, elm, wood for your broom handle um, you might follow this rule of waiting for a branch to fall off and use it um, for your magical broom the elm is associated with love magic and it is often used as the maple for beltane celebrations now there's a maple tree maple tree is associated with prosperity love and long life while not as magical as some other trees, it is sturdy and long-lasting, and it is often used for wands. You may be able to find a pre-made maple dowel um, to use as your broomstick if you look at a local hardware store. Oak is another one. Um, it's a traditional wood used for broomsticks. It's masculine and strong. It was revered by the druids who reputedly met under its branches. A powerfully protective tree, it can grow to tremendous size and live a very long time. Oaks are used for power, protection, healing, luck and prosperity. You can, you, you can think of it as an all-purpose magical wood. In Ogham alphabet, the oak represents strength, stability and nobility. Another one is the pine. Um, many store-bought uh, brooms have pine handles. It's inexpensive wood um, and it's easy to find. Associated with healing, fertility uh, because of its prolific pine cones, which not only make new pine trees all over the place, but contain edible pine nuts. Uh, it, could, it is also associated with protection prosper and prosperity. Yule trees are always made of some kind of uh, fear F-I-R. <laughs> Ockham symbol, symbol for fears stands for clarity, achievement and energy. Rowan trees is another one and it's been associated with witches for a long time. Um, ironically both as magical tree and as one that was used to protect against witches. It is also considered spiritually protective and has historically been used to protect ships from sinking and houses from lightning strikes. And it was made into magic wands, dowsing rods and walking sticks. That's the Rowan tree. If you want a particular protective brick, you may want to see if you can find a piece of Rowan to use your handle. The Ogham symbol for Rowan stands for protection, expression and connection. And last but not least, there's the walnut. It's a large, strong tree with darker than usual wood. In Italy, witches were used to dance underneath walnut trees during their secret rituals. Walnuts are associated with love, prosperity, healing and luck. If someone gifts you with walnuts, your dreams are supposedly to come true. So I've made these, they're on my Etsy store. Um, you get two packs uh, of brooms or besoms with the chanting, the incantation in there. Um, to, you can put them on the altar or 
um, most of the altar you can hang them on top of your doorway um, on top of your bedroom door um, to repel any negative nightmares um, and also putting them that way on top of a doorway give um, to protect your home to protect your home protect your members of the family home and um, uh, repel negativity and bring in luck i infuse these with cinnamon um cinnamon oil essential oil so pure cinnamon essential oil and why I did that because cinnamon is all purpose um if you hang them in, in your kitchen on your kitchen uh area uh you bring in prosperity abundance love and luck and protection from poverty so that's what that's this was my purpose there and for cinnamon brooms um you don't have to make them with cinnamon sticks but you can put cinnamon sticks um as twigs um so it is a powerful spice cinnamon and it is equally powerful smell it is a pleasant smelling symbol of your life as a witch purely decorative or a charming gift for a fellow pagan on a special occasion such as a birthday wedding or a housewarming gift um, it is um, as I said before very um, powerful spice and it's all purpose it is associated with love healing protection spirituality sexuality psychic ability success and power in general so it's got everything in there that you need um, and attaching with the symbol of the goddess the trinity um the ma lady mother uh, maiden ah uh, the maiden mother and crone as well um the goddess symbol and you've got one with the pentagram uh you can see that um uh, for protection balancing elements and you know, pentagram is for highly protection symbol and do not worry i have consecrated them and blessed on them and given you that power um some of them i have this is the pomegranate um wood from pomegranate tree um these bristles are from the craft store they're wood um wood straw they were named as wood straw um but overall it, it is what you put in them uh the intention you put the power you put in them and the um the ability they give you back you know just putting um the witching power okay so i'm going to give you some oils you can use um for specific um intentions so for energy strength and courage you can use cinnamon ginger lemon and orange for healing there's calendula lavender lemon balm and rosemary love geranium lavender lemon and rose peace and happiness you can use bergamot bergamot i don't know chamomile geranium lavender lemon balm for prosperity basil bergamot or bergamot <laughs> cinnamon and peppermint protection and purification geranium lemon rosemary psychic ability and conscious mind chamomile ginger lavender and peppermint um, although you can use anything you associate with you don't have to use those um, there are lots of different uh, magical uses for um, different types of herbs and spices um, not just these listed here or the ones I've given you okay anything else to purify your space with the broom um, first of all the broom is uh, not to be considered as a core ritual tool in Wicca it's been there ever since medieval times renaissance times you know yeah <laughs> um 
So it is often used to purify in ritual space before casting the sacred circle. Um, it doesn't usually involve sweeping, but the bristles do not touch the floor. Uh, this is a more of a ritual, energetic purifying of the space, removing negative energy or just plain energetic clutter. Um, just like in Practical Magic, the movie, how they um, sweep off the, the energy in that scene. Um, but the bristles, the bristles do not touch the floor. If you want to clear up your space, you need to vacuum or um, a mop. I'm going to clean the floor in a mundane way. First with your normal cleaning broom and then sweep it off with your normal magical broom. Not normal. Magical broom. <laughs> and do not touch the floor while you're sweeping. Uh, start from the end of the house to the front door, sweeping the negativity out. Because ritual brooms serve as purifiers, they are associated with the element of water, as I said before. And they are sacred to the goddess. However, um, when it comes to marriage and hand fasting, um, this part here is the masculine, the one, the the stick, and the bristles are the feminine, creating a balance in um, feminine and mas masculine energies. As like um, with hand fasting, you know, coming in together, the masculine and the feminine coming in as one. Uh, the broom can also be used. Uh, to help close the circle at the end of a ritual it can be highly effective at dissipating residual energies raised during the ritual during the ritual itself the broom will usually sit to the side of the wiccan altar otherwise it's common to place it near the entrance to your home to guard against negative or unwanted energy as i do to my home um say so, um just apply it how you want to apply you don't have to follow rules witchcraft is not about following rules it's following your own path um if you want to follow rules it's weaker they've got rules um and you know just don't go all negative comments on me it is because it's all about rules following rules <laughs> um witchcraft as i am a solitary witch eclectic witch i do pick up some stuff that i resonate with that work with me and just follow my own path um i've helped many people and um, you can check out my uh, reviews and testimonials on Instagram um, I've taken out my website so um, you might see the testimonials on my Instagram I screenshot them and put them there or on my Facebook page as well so I hope this helped and um, uh, for the next video I had a, um, a vote in mag magical creatures for wisdom Wednesdays so I might do that for magical creatures That'll be amazing. Lots of research. I love doing research. This book is recommended. If you want to do something about um, spells using brooms, um, getting the broom lore traditions, and there are many other um, broom laws scattered around this book, which is amazing. So I um, highly recommend Deborah Blake for this book and Judica Eels. Um, uh, another thing is what we in my culture if it, if a broom falls you have um you either get married or you are going to be visited by a, a guest that's one thing in my culture but yay <laughs> so yeah there's lots of different cultures out there with different um broom laws and superstitions and traditions so amazing information all right <laughs> um see you guys next time thank you so much for watching and um let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to know um research for you to do and anything magical or spell work you want me to do thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye lovies